Hello, hello, hello. What a headache. What's going on, my peeps? BB the beauty, what's up? This is gonna get a little annoying. I'm trying something new today. Somebody said that I was too close to the camera all the time. They can see my mocos. So. I'm gonna try to use my uh, computer here and see if it could get done. Pablito, what's up, man? Pablo X in the house. Salute. Ceci, what's up? Thank you for joining us today. Very fun day today. We have one of the, oh, it's pausing again? Oh, hell no. Missed too much shit, hold on. How about now, we doing good? We good now, right? We good now? You guys let me know if I pause. You guys let me know if I pause. Alright, I'm gonna do the wax on, wax off, and tell me if it pauses. Wax on, wax off, wax on. Uh, yes. Yeah, dog. They ain't gonna get us, bro. They ain't gonna get us. I ain't gonna let the internet take us, dude. I don't let Instagram take us today, bro. No way in hell. None whatsoever. Cheers. Oh, man. One more minute. Where's Ralphie, boy? You guys seen Ralphie, boy? So, if you guys catch me looking over here, is because I got my computer here. Um, somebody told me that <clears throat> I was too close to the camera. So now I'm a little bit back. Read the shirt. And now we're, uh, you know, so if I do this, is because I'm looking at the computer to read all your shit. Oh, Rafi is here. And like always, let's get the show on the road. Boom, welcome to another exciting episode of Sessions on Rebel Day 702. I'm your host, Grease. Thank you for taking a part of your day chill here with us. We are having a good, good, good day. Wednesday, it's a beautiful 93 degrees out here in Las Vegas. I'm lying, it's 97 degrees out here. And the only time we get to hang out is at night. Today, we have a very special guest. He um, has put in a lot of work. Uh, a lot of people know this kid, kid, guy, we're the same age, call him kid, um, cool guy, cool guy, super cool guy, a lot, a lot of people like him, um, uh, have met him, uh, he's put in work various ways, DJ, world-class promoter, um, you name it, and, uh, he's helped so much on the, on the page, and I wanted to have him on here so we could, uh, talk to him and see what, uh, you know, his insights and what he went through during the Rebel Days and beyond. So, without further ado, let's go find Mr. Uh, Raphael, a.k.a. Ralphie Boy. Here. Uh, we're going to do this. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? 
Good, brother. How you doing, brother? I'm doing awesome, man. Thanks for having me on, man. I feel blessed to be on here with you, bro. Thank you. Nah, man. Thanks for coming on, bro. I'm super happy, man. Every every guy that comes on here, every person, I, I love having them, man. And, and, and I like to talk about stories. So definitely you guys uh, make it for a fun time. Um, so well, let's get to it, bro. Story, oh, well, well, where do you I'm ready start? for him. All right, we're going to take well, you, it from the you, beginning. You, 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 it's your we're show, talking. man. So you. <laughs> no, bro, it's your show. I'm just here kicking it, bro. Um, all right, so let's start from straight, straight from the beginning. What was your first party? How'd you get into the party scene? Let us know. Uh, the first party that I actually went to was uh, Up in Smoke uh, by the Lost Boys. And that was when I was, uh, I believe, seventh grade. Uh, still, in, still in middle school, bro. I think it was... Uh, they, they did it for spring break, and uh, um, I was kicking it with the people that eventually became the outsiders, like I was telling you earlier. Uh, I went with the school with the outsiders over at Del H, and they're, they're the ones that introduced me to, to the party scene almost. And yeah, dude, it was uh, up in smoke by the Lost Boys, bro, and then after that, it just it just went on from there, dude. How uh, how did you get into the scene? Like, what... What happened? How did you get to go to this rave? Like, what happened a little bit prior to that? Did you see, some, you know, the rave? Were you a rebel? Like, what got you into this, into the scene before you went to your first rave? Actually, I mean, I, I had never known about that shit. Like, I mean, I went to Catholic school and all that when I was younger. So, I mean, when I got introduced to it, I was, it was like a whole different world to me, bro. I, uh, I worked at a Mexican restaurant on Easter of Bonanza, like I had told you earlier, and, um, uh, Angel from the Wild Ones uh, worked there, and this was when I was like 13 years old, 12, 13, and he'd always tell me about all these parties that he'd be going to on the weekends, bro, and I never believed him, and then he'd always bring me the flyers, and then eventually, I believe, uh, I went to back to the ranch, and then that's when I was like, oh, wow, this shit's like fucking, like, the shit, you know what I mean? It was something different that I had never experienced before, dude. Like I said, I grew up going to Catholic school and kind of living... A sheltered life when I was younger, and then when I got thrown into this, I was like, "Wow, it was like something completely different, bro." But I, I, I totally enjoyed it, dude. I'm not gonna lie; it was something that, that when I saw it, I'm like, "Damn, this is this is dope," you know. And after that, bro, it, I, I just got hooked, dude. To be honest with you, it's a drug, bro. It's a drug that we couldn't stop, bro. Exactly, man. Exactly. So you you but, had this? Did, oh, go ahead, brother. No, 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 go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to recap on what you were saying. So this guy named Angel from the from uh, uh, the Wild Ones. Wild Ones, yep. He, yeah, so he, he worked with you at this uh, Mexican restaurant where uh, – uh, what what was the name of the Mexican restaurant? Where was it at? It was called El Taquito. It was right there on Eastern and Bonanza. It was like one of the one of the more popular restaurants back growing up in that time. If you wanted, There wasn't that many Mexican restaurants more one of the popular ones it was owned by the people from Ariana's uh the people from Ariana's actually owned it and yeah Angel started working there he was friends with uh, the owner's son they went to Vegas uh together and he started working there and yeah they just it, it just all started from there and then that's when I moved I moved to a different neighborhood on the east side and then that's when I met the guys that would become the outsiders okay and they just it just took off from there. So just to recap real quick, or not to recap, just to add my two cents. Normally try yeah. to, you know, link in with everybody. Uh, so this place called it Taquito was uh, yeah. on the corner of uh, Bonanza and Eastern. And it was yeah. like tucked in that corner on the, what is it, uh, southwest uh, uh, corner. Yeah, exactly. We, yeah. We actually threw our uh, the outlaws in '96. Actually, threw their second rave there called Rugrats. Uh, it, it got at that uh, bar. It was the bar store, right? No, no, it was it at, the, at, the at the restaurant. Yeah, we went oh, okay, in there. We moved I'm... all the tables and everything. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, we moved all the tables and everything, and then we had paid the guy like two hundred bucks or something, and then we got some really cheap flyers and we passed it out and. We had a full full pop. It was it was popping, and then the cops got there and broke it up or whatever. But you know, it got. I mean, we made it to like twelve one o'clock. I think that night, which is super cool. Yeah. And, and then I, I walked I over. I, I, yeah, I remember. I, I know. I remember exactly what you're talking about because mm -hmm. I had worked that night and I had seen the line of fucking people 
trying to get into that place right next door. So I, I, I know what you're talking about, man. Yeah, that was our, our, our second and last rave. It was, uh, it was uh, a very uh, short um, life as a promoter. So back to you. Um, so you got it. You start hanging out with the guys from the Outsiders. What 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 happened? Did you join join the Outsiders? How 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 did your career in that industry uh, progress? Um. Well, like I said, I went to school with them. Uh, it was uh, eighth uh, eighth grade, and that's when they all started dressing like rebels. And me living in the same neighborhood as them, you know, I was friends with them. Uh, and they, you know, I saw them, I saw how they were dressing and I already had experience what the parties were like with, you know, learning from Angel and listening to Angel and stuff like that, that, that interests me. So I started dressing like, you know, just like how they were dressing with the, the Levi's and the cut up, you know, jeans, the boots, the shirts from uh, the thrift store and stuff like that. And that's when they started and... I, I never claimed to be an outsider, but they, they said I was, I mean, I, I hung out with them, and mm. they told me one time that, you know, I was an original member uh, from the outsiders, but I never claimed that. I knew who the guys were. I, you know, we all live in the same neighborhood, but I, I mean, I never claimed that, dude, to be honest with you. I knew who they were, and I mean, that, that's about it, bro. And that's they're the on. ones that introduced I me. Mean, they introduced me to that. We went to a couple of... Uh, parties i remember we went to uh what was it uh the birthday bash over at sinaluense i'll never forget that party that was like one of the dopest parties that i had been up to up and up until that point where it was it was just dope you know the line was up the ass you know i mean the part once he got inside the party was dope with lights and everything so yeah dude it, it just it just carried on from there man honestly right on man right on so party after party after party I'm not gonna let you go past. Hey I wanna. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I'm right here. You can hear me? We good? Oh, there you are. I lost you. Right. Are we good? Pretty much. You sound a little distorted right now. There we go. All right. So. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Man, Instagram better not be messing with me, man. They did it last week, bro. Yeah, yeah, last yeah. Week. You're just breaking up a little bit on me, but I can hear you. Go ahead. Wow. Okay, so, uh, you know, you did, you I, and I don't want to, yeah, I could hear you. So I'm not going to take this to, uh, like, past 99, because that's kind of when I stopped. So I'm going to hold off till you tell me stories about 2000. So we're going to call it BG and AG. So a BG, like BC, before Christ, and then after death. So it'll be before Greece, and then after Greece. So we'll take it from there. Um, so before Greece, so 1999, what other raves or what other parties or what other events were you going to All right, right before good. getting into? That's good. Yeah, right before you're getting into, like, you know, the, the, the 2000s. Before the 2000s, any rave that you went to that oh, really well, stuck hmm. out, that really fucking was like, oh, shit. Uh, well, let me see. All the, the wacky tobacco at the, the, the attic. I don't, I don't know if you know. No, at the Huntridge, actually. Wacky Tobacco 3, uh, Wicked Chaos uh, at the attic. I don't know if you remember that party or not. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're coming in clear. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you're cutting off. You're, it's cutting in. Okay, so yeah, like Wacky Tobacco, Wicked Chaos 3. Uh, back to the ranch. Um, what else? Uh, Club Orgasm. Uh, I mean, all these different parties that uh, all these different uh, party crews were throwing at that time, dude. I mean, I pretty much went to all of them, dude. You know, I, I was everywhere, bro. Uh, I partied with everybody, and it, it was it was dope, man. You know. Mm. There's the just so many. To name. I, I mean, it's just so hard to name because. United, I mean, I got to give oh, Henry from Viper Productions his due, man. United, Demon Knight, uh, all the events that he threw were always dope, man. Uh, Generation X with uh, Jacob, I mean, all the events that he threw early on were dope, man. So, I mean, all dope, bro. I, I, I can't, I mean, I just can't name one of them, but they were all dope, bro, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, man. I mean, Demon Knight to me always sticks out. It was one of my favorite events. Uh, talking to Henry, I mean, I don't know how they put it together, but those raves were just amazing. They were just yeah. such a great event, dude, and they did everything here's so the, awesome. And here's the thing that a lot of people don't know. Henry was basically a one-man show. Yeah, he had people that helped him promote and everything, but I mean, Henry was a one-man show, bro, and he put on some spectacular events, bro. I got to give it to the guy. Yeah, no, he did hands down, bro. Like, I didn't get the the thing about the show is that, uh, or this page is that it has. I have gotten the opportunity to meet so many people that I've heard of, or that I looked up to, or that I party next to each other and never really talked to anybody. And now doing this stuff, it makes you know, it helps me connect. So, dude, getting a chance to to talk to Henry and talk to DJ Panic and talk to all these other cats that I never got a chance to talk to. It's pretty cool, man, because you really get to step into their minds and really, like, now really look at it and say, like, man, you did this all by yourself, or you brought this DJ, or you did this with these, you know, it's it's super cool, the opportunity we're getting with this stuff, you know? No, I, I, absolutely, bro. You're, you're absolutely right, man. And it was, like, it, it, it's incredible what you're doing, bro. This, uh, this really brings back memories to a time where, you know, we had fun every... Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we all look forward to partying, bro. Like, that was, you know, it started off with Thursdays at a day, and it went from to Friday to a house party to an event to Saturday to another event, and it just, it was the dopest time, at least for me, man. It was the dopest time that that I could say I I enjoyed it, man, and I enjoyed it to the fullest, bro, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, dude, I, uh, me too. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it, and obviously we can't let it go because here we are, you know, keep keep doing it, you know, keep trying to do this stuff. Um, so what? So I know that you've been – you. I remember reaching out to you through Facebook uh, mm-hmm. when I started the page, and I, I knew of you. I, we met a couple of times. I was already on my way out when you when you were kicking it with a good friend of ours, uh, uh, buddies from the Outlaws. You started hanging out with them or not. And I remember you and, and, dude, like, once I reached out to you, you were like, bro, I'm on. Like, what do you, you know, I got you back. Like, I'll support, i promote. You didn't have an IG page. You got an IG page. Like, you jumped on and you were on it. And from from then on, dude, like, you've been supporting the page and even now part of the page, which, you know, I thank you. De- definitely been helping a lot, a lot. And, and we're moving forward with it. Um, most definitely, did, man. Most definitely, dude. Did you, uh, so I know you represent, the Sinister Crowd Familia. Tell me a little bit of story about like the 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 them and, and you. How how did that how did that join come together? It was actually kind of funny how how that came to be. Um, I I don't know if you remember the the show that they used to do on ninety one point five. They used to play like house music on Saturday nights. Mm-hmm. You remember that show? Still with mm-hmm. the real grainy voice and shit. Yeah, yeah. So. I uh, Leo, Freaky Ficky man, was uh, DJing uh, one night on there, and, you know, he uh, he came on and said, hey, you know, anybody that, uh, that wants a mixtape, you know, hit up the station, and, you know, I'll send you a mixtape or whatever. So, you know, I, I normally called up and gave my information, and, you know, I'm waiting for my fucking mixtape for, like, the longest time, and I run into him at the mall. He's out passing flyers for, I, I don't know what party. And I see the flyer, and it's a sinister crowd, and I put two and two together. I'm like, hey, man, you know, what's up with my tape? And he, and he looked at me all weird like I was fucking stupid and shit. And he, I'm like, yeah, bro, I called in a couple months ago. You know, where's, where's my mixtape? <laughs> and he's like, oh, bro, you know, I, I didn't handle that. You know, the people at the radio station handled that. He goes, but here, take my number, and I'll get you a mixtape. And I'm like, cool. So I, I hit him up. And he was getting ready to throw an event, and he invited me to it. He's like, hey, bro, you know, I feel bad for, you know, you not getting your tape. Uh, why don't you come down to this event I'm throwing? I'll get you in for free and shit like that. And so I, I think it was Wicked Chaos 4, or I don't know what event it was, but it was over at the Ozone. And I went, and, you know, he let me in and stuff like that. And then me and him started, you know, started to talk. And he, you know, he... He took a liking to me, bro, mm. and he's, he knew that I was still in high school, and at that time, a lot of the people that were from Sinister, they were already out of the high school. You know what I mean? Leo was the older, 
Gilbert, Ian, all of those guys that were in Sinister, they were already, you know, 20 and 21, 22. So they didn't have anybody in the high schools anymore. So when he met me, he kind of, you know, he he kind of put it like, yo, you know, I'm, I like this kid. I'm going to, you know, trust him. And then that's when he's like, hey, bro, I'm going to let you join Sinister. And I know, like he told you on here, he did catch a lot of fucking grief because, you know, I was partying all over the place. But he, he took a liking to me, man. And, I mean, I went to work, bro. And anybody that, that knows me, man, I, I could promote a fucking party, bro. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. And And this is like you know, straight up, like, what you've been doing with the page and jumping on and, like, you know, 110%, you're all about it. A lot of people just see what we post, but, you know, being in the background, man, and getting a chance to uh, to having all that stuff and seeing you work, bro, you're definitely a promoter, and you push it in, bro. Uh, and, Vegas... you know, I learned that from him, bro. No, Tone, I didn't get jumped in, man, sorry. <laughs> We weren't, we weren't wild ones, man. We weren't wild ones. <laughs> so with the, with the, so you you join you know Leo takes liking to you. Join the crew. What's your first order of business, man? Like where where is your position in the Sinister Graphic Media? Uh, the first event that uh, we did, which. Uh, put me on the map basically is when he put me on the flyer for Tigger's Great Adventure, the first mm. one that we did mm -hmm. over at Club Forbidden. Um, yeah. He put me on the flyer, and man, I must have passed out, I don't know, 5,000 flyers for that damn event. And my name was on there, bro, and that's when everybody kind of started getting to know who I mean. People knew who I was before that, but once uh -huh. my name got put on that flyer, it just it, it blew up. And he made the mistake of putting me at the door for that event. And, bro, I'm not going to lie. I must have let in, like, I don't know, over 100 people in for free. And he, he was pissed. <laughs> he never put me at the door again. <laughs> so that's funny, dude. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah, he, never me, he never put me at the door again after that night, dude. And, you know, it's uh, it just went on from there. You know, we did uh, Club Karma, Club Chaos, all over at the Forbidden Club. And then he kind of took a break for a little bit, and then that's when we uh, did Tigger's Great Adventure 2 over up uh, behind the Huntridge. The place was called The Sanctuary. I don't know if you know. The Sanctuary, yeah, yeah. man. I, I punk rocked in a, yeah. uh, I punk rocked some shows right there, man. Some some nice punk rock and hard hard rock in there for for a minute. It was a it was a cool little spot, man. It was cool. Yeah, we we did. Uh, I did. We did two events there. We did the Tigger's Great Adventure. Uh, part two, and then we did Wicked Chaos five, and then that was mm. the last event that we did to that to that point. And then fast forward to 2011, we did something else. But between 2000 and 2011, I was throwing house parties. I mean, up the ass, and anybody that that knows me knows the house parties that I used to do at my house over off of Comstock and off of Cheyenne, off of Kitt Street. And stuff like that. Like everybody knew where I lived, man. Which, which it was good, and then it sucked too, in, in, in its way as well. So you know, this is all before Greece, after Greece. So let's get to the after Greece part and jumping on to like your house parties and all that stuff. You actually picked up DJing. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yeah. your DJ experience, man. Your DJ times. Well, believe it or not, like. Um, the first guy that ever gave me vinyl was I got to give it to DJ Chell. Uh, DJ Chell was the first guy that gave me my first uh, five pieces of vinyl. He gave me my first five records, and I kind of took it from there, man. I I would saw I would see Leo and stuff like that DJing. Of course, Panic, Tone, Neto, and all these other guys that you know I looked up to and stuff like that, and I would see them doing it. And I just got interested in it, bro. And, you know, one was to learn to DJ, and the other one was, like, how what every other guy says it was to get the girls and stuff like that. What what girl doesn't like a DJ, you know what I mean? But, yeah, no, no. I mean, You're I right. never, you know, I, I'll say this. Um, I never knew to be the best. You know, I, I know there was better DJs than me. Yeah, I, 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 I did what I could, but, you know, I got to give, give my props to, you know, Panic, of course, Tone, Poppy, 
Chael, Chael, which, like I said, gave me my first records. All these other guys that came before me, man, you know, I got to give it up to them, dude. You know, they, they, they're the ones that I looked up to and, you know, that gave me that inspiration to want to, you know, want to do it, bro. So big ups to them. How, how many house parties did you do? Oh, wow. Um, just at that Comstock house, bro, probably more than 10 or 15, dude. Um, we had parties there every, every other week or, you know, every weekend. The way that it would turn out is there'd be other parties going on. Those would get raided, and we would, I would be there, and I'd be like, hey, everybody, let's go to my house. And everybody already knew where we lived. So everybody would come over there. We would set up the DJ equipment. You know, we had a house with a basement that people know, you know, that know that house. You know, we had the house with the basement and shit like that. And, bro, those were parties that would go on all fucking night long, dude. You know what I mean? It was, those parties were, were, were dope. You know, Panic can tell you, um, Tone, Tone DJed a couple of those parties for us. Uh, OC was always at some of those parties. George. Christian, you know, all your boys would always show up. So yeah, dude, those 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 parties were were pretty dope, man. They were, they were all pretty dope, to tell you the truth. You got here, El Jefe, uh, really enjoying your parties, and he sketched a bunch of flyers for you. Yeah, yeah, Christian, man, what's up, Christian? Yeah, dude, he uh he did a lot of our parties. Uh, he, uh the freak nasty party, he sketched that one. He did the Bruja de 71, the Halloween party. Yeah, a lot of the, uh, those house party flyers, uh, he, he did them, bro. He, he, he's a very talented guy, and, you know, drawing and shit like that. And he, he did all those flyers for us, man. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. It's always having people just, you know, support to do things, man. It always makes it fun and easy. Um, there's definitely a, 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 a few videos out there. I think I posted some of them about one of them was at your house. Um, yeah. And it looked like it was rocking, bro. It was, it was pumping. It was oh, pumping. Yeah. That, that one, that party was up at the house that we had up on uh, Cheyenne. It was off of Cheyenne and Simmons. And mm -hmm. I remember that party vividly because I remember everybody showed up. I remember the Lost Boys was there, the twins, the creator, uh, people from TP, like every dude, Everybody was there at that party, bro. And the thing about that party, it never got broken up. Uh, my roommate that I had at the time, he got tired and he wanted to go to sleep. So he ended at like 4 in the morning, bro. He finally pulled the plug and he was like, that's it. But yeah, dude, that fucking ha that, that party right there from that video, it went on all night long. And I mean, everybody was there, bro. That was a dope-ass party. Right on, man. Right yes. on. Yes, OC knows what's up, man. He 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 he's, he kicked it in that basement. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm reading right now, man. He's definitely saying it was uh it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, there's a picture. There's a picture on on Rebel Day Seven at Toe where it's uh me, Grease, Christian, uh who else is on there? OC, a bunch of I mean a bunch of people from like the old days where we all took a picture together. And, uh, yeah, you posted it on there, dude. I mean, it was yeah, dope yeah, yeah. times, bro. It was dope times, man. Which one was your favorite rave? Uh, you know what? I got to give it to uh, to Jacob at Generation X Heaven that he had over at uh, Chinatown Mall, bro. Um, I know that wasn't uh, a party from our scene, but, you know, we went to that party, a bunch of my friends, you know, Fat Beats and a bunch of his crew from Good Time Boys that I keep it with at the time. We all showed up to that event, bro, and, you know, we, we all took what was popular at that time, and it just made that party ten times even better, dude. Like, it was a dope-ass party, bro. I got to give it to Jacob, man. That, that, to me, hands down, and I've told him before, it was the dopest party, bro, it was heaven at the Chinatown Mall. Yeah, it was a crazy night. That was a crazy. I was there. It was a, a definitely a crazy event. Uh, everything was perfect. You know what I mean? And and being in the party scene, you know, understanding like promoting and DJing and all that stuff. Not every party's perfect. Not every event is perfect. And sometimes you get lucky, and it's like 
this is the perfect event, and it happened, which was yeah. it was cool, man. Major props, major props. Okay, so yeah. there was a transition that I always talk about in the party scene. Uh, and then after that transition, I, I'm, I, I stepped out, so I never know, but I always like to ask questions to see what really transpired during that, that area. And, um, it was, you know, towards 99, 2000, everything started shifting into a different style, uh, of, of parties, of raves and stuff like that. I mean, and I know you partied until, you know, you kept going with it. What do you have to say about like that time after you know the the rebel days and not D A Z E U but D A Y like everything started kind of coming down new crews started coming out new styles new scene what 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 you know what are your experiences on that on that set? I honestly think uh, it was the end of ninety nine two thousand. That's when you saw like the change from like everybody that used to dress like a rebel before go to like the hip hop style, you know, with the more baggier clothing and, and the baggier pants and listening more to hip hop. And you would notice that a lot of these parties that we were DJing, they didn't want house no more. They wanted, they wanted hip hop. And you would hear a lot more hip hop at these parties and you would do house music. Like if you would play house music, people would stop dancing basically. And, oh, wow. you know, you put, the hip, you put the hip hop back on and, you know, you have the fucking whole floor packed with people, you know, dancing hip-hop. And, you know, I think right up at the end of, like, 99, 2000, dude, that's when it all it all changed, you know? It just people mm -hmm. stopped dressing like a rebel, and they went into more of that casual uh, hip-hop style. And you had crews like TP and uh, Playboys and all these other crews that popped up. And it just evolved from there, dude, you know. And then that's when the drama started because they went from more of being a party crew to actually mimicking, like, a real gang. And, you know, there would always be fights and shootings and stuff like that. And it just went down from there. Mm. So how was your transition through all this time? I mean, you used to spend so much time going to all these raves, all these, you know, rebel parties and stuff like that. All of a sudden, you start seeing this transition. How did you take the transition? What did you do? And I'm... But can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You know, at first, you know, I mean, I, 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 mean, I didn't really like it, bro, because, you know what I mean, it was... I knew what that scene would bring, and I mean, I, I didn't really, I didn't, did I agree with it? No, but I knew that that was going to be the next evolution of, of the parties because that's what everybody that had dressed like a rebel before was doing now. You know what I mean? Everybody was dressing more hip hop and more, and more stuff like that. And I mean, I evolved with it too, bro. You know, a lot of the guys also that went from dressing from rebels kind of changed up to the greaser style as mm -hmm. well. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They, they mm -hmm. kind of changed it up like that as well. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, I started dressing more casual and stuff like that, listening to more hip hop. And, you know, we would play more fucking, uh, more hip hop at these parties. It's like before when like Tone would be playing house when he would play at our, pay, at our, at our parties, I'd be like, hey, Tone, you need to play hip hop. You know what I mean? Because that's what people wanted. And the same thing with Panic. When Panic would DJ at our parties, I mean, he would play nothing more. He would play nothing but hip hop mostly, because that's what the people wanted to hear. Yeah, no, it it definitely changed a lot. You know what I mean? I know I know a lot of people struggled through it. Uh, I got bits and pieces of it because I was still like, you know, come back real quick and then bounce and you know stuff like that. We were all growing into different directions and we all took different ways out. You know what I mean? And whatnot from the from the scene, but. Yeah, I remember that uh, Oh Diddy and, uh, the, you know, people rolling up with uh, corn rolls and Pelly Pelly shirts and Sean Johns and stuff like that. So, yeah. traded in those uh, those Harley boots for the Air Force Ones and stuff. OC was, a, I mean, OC was a one of them. I remember fucking seeing OC all greasered out and shit with the pump and to fucking with the corn rolls and wearing the... The Pele Pele and the khakis and the Buffalino <laughs> boots and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, it, 
it, it was quite a it was quite a transition, man. It it really was. <laughs> we used to call him O Diddy. That's O Diddy right there, right? <laughs> o Diddy, brother. Hey, uh, <laughs> I mean, what's up? I mean, before anything else, I just want to give a big shout out. I saw that she's on here to Bree from Legendary Empowerment. Just want to thank her for all the support that she's been giving us. Got the shirt, Legendary Empowerment. I mean, she's she's awesome, dude. I mean, she's uh she's a writer, man. She's a writer. Yeah, we we got we got a little special uh, thing brewing, me and Bree for uh, for August. So stay tuned because that's gonna be pretty dope. Uh, and I'll let you guys yeah. know in August. But uh, you know, definitely a big ups to her. Uh, and OC says braids. They were braids, not corn rolls. <laughs> oh my bad, my bad, <laughs> my bad. Oh Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want yeah, to change the, just change it up a little bit and just tell me how bad and how much does DJ Panic suck? Now I'm just playing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I just had to call that dude nah. out right now, bro. <laughs> nah, you know what, man? Me and uh, me, me and Panic are, are really good friends, man. I've known that guy for over 20 years, dude, and. I used to be his little roadie and shit, man. I used to carry his records everywhere and help him set up his equipment to all the little parties that he, I mean, he used to drag, well, he didn't drag me. I used to like going with him, but every, every quinceanera, wedding, bar mitzvah, every party that he, that he did, man, I, I was, his, I was his little roadie, man. It was fun. It was fun, dude. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's a he's a cool cat, you know what I mean? And 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 we're not gonna talk about it yet until you let me know that we're ready to talk about it. But we also got that coming up soon. Oh, of um, course, of course. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's gonna be super cool as well. But I just had to throw that in there because you know he he's always oh, he, he's a big fan of the one, show. And he, yeah, go ahead. One la one thing too that I also remember, and I know Tone remembers this very very vividly. The the day that I actually I wanted a DJ so bad that I actually paid DJ Tone twenty dollars to let me DJ. I don't know if he still remembers that or not, but I know if I didn't mention it, he fucking bring it up. So I'm gonna mention it before he does. Yeah, I gave Tone twenty bucks for him to let me DJ at a party. And that asshole took. I don't know he sure fucking did. What an asshole, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you went to McDonald's right after that shit, that fucking asshole. Yeah, I don't know I don't know if he still remembers it, but I I still remember it, man. I remember it. And what I event remember was he this? used to bring it up to me. Huh? What event was this? You know what? I don't re I don't remember. It was at uh at the Italian American Club. And I don't think it was an event, it was a party because at one point, he was teaching how to dance uh, balls to the quinceañeras and stuff like that. And oh, what? They had, yeah, 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 yeah. They had told me that I can DJ, and he's there DJing. And I'm like, hey, man, what? I mean, I'm supposed to be DJing here. And he's like, nah, this is my event. I'm like, look, bro, I want to DJ. I'll give you fucking $20, bro. Let me DJ. So he's like, give me the $20. So I gave him the $20, and he <laughs> let me DJ, bro. Bro, so 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 Tone was teaching these people how to dance uh, like the Elbals and shit. Yeah, bro. Oh, this was like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I love this show, bro. Can, I love I, it. He can deny it all he wants, man, but I I remember it. <laughs> yeah, hell on. <laughs> he was a damn hell on blast, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm gonna have my quinceanera, you know, this year in October, so. I need you to teach me the little waltz. We do the waltz with Cheyenne and shit. Dude, we gotta do that shit. <laughs> I got. I got. I gotta say this though, man. Tone. Tone was always been real cool with me, man. Um, always gave advice. Always gave tips and stuff like that. Uh, Tone's a good dude, man. I I respect Tone a lot. He's a very good dude. Like you know, he did a lot of events for us and stuff like that. So I got nothing bad to say about Tone. He's the homie. Big ups to Tone, man. I'm glad you're still. You know, you know, the cool thing is, like, we're all from different crews and different parts of the party scene. And the page has brought us together. Uh, you know, I, I deal with Tone a lot. Uh, uh, Mill Crates was his idea. I just named it, but he wanted to do DJ and stuff on the page. And so Mill Crates, you know, pretty much he's the one that came up with the idea. And uh, 
you know, we're all like kind of joining into this little, you know, pot of like different stuff to, to create Rebel Day 702 and which I'm super grateful for everybody, you know what I mean? Super grateful for you, you know, uh, Panic, Neto, Tone, like all you guys, OC, everybody pitching in, Legendary Empowerment, uh, Bree over there, everybody's putting in stuff and I love it, man. I, I love how everybody, you know, comes together no, to, to this stuff, man. It's it's great and, and I love the love for it, man. I mean, look at us, bro. Here, just twenty some years later, bro, and we're still talking about it. You know, yeah, we can't. It meant that. I mean, it meant that much to us, bro. That you know, we're still here reminiscing. But I bet you, anybody that you ask on here, it's going to be like, yeah, bro, those were some of the best times that that we lived because you know we partied hard, you know, and it was fun, dude. I mean, it, it was fun. It really was. Especially yeah, I mean, for me. Yeah, it was it was a great time, bro. It was a great time for all of us, man. I mean, like you said, I mean, from what I hear and from people that that know you, that that I know, and they're all like, yeah, man, he was always partying, he was always out there doing his thing, you know, da da da. da. I'm like, dude, yeah, I mean, this guy's the the guy's on it, and I could see the love that you have for it just working with you lately, you know. What I mean, just doing all the stuff yeah. that we're doing together. It's like you step in and you're on it, bro. You're you're ready to go. You're ready to do your things and. And you push hard, man, and and I love that that passion, and I'm glad you still have that passion uh, from then to no, now. Of course, and then, I'll say this to a lot of the people that know me on here, and I was a cocky motherfucker, bro. I'll be the first one to admit that I was young yeah. and cocky, and my mouth my mouth would run like this, bro, all the time, dude. I mean, because I was from Sinister Crowd, bro, and that was like the biggest cruise that what there was at that time. And I mean, I talked. I mean, I, I talked a lot, dude. And it it created a lot of sometimes tension with a lot of other people that would hate and stuff like that. I knew I know a lot of people didn't like me back then and and stuff like that, dude. But it is what it is, man. I'm I'm glad that we can sit here now and you know all these people are are on here, dog, and and hearing me talk and stuff like that. It's nice. But yeah, bro, I I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, I was young. I was cocky, and I mean, my mouth did run a lot, bro. And everybody that's on here will tell you that, dude. I, my my mouth did run a lot, dude. As 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 a rebel, dude, and I'm gonna be straight out. As a rebel, man, that was part of the gig, bro. That was part of the nature. Like I didn't care. I didn't. I don't care what kind of rebel you were, or what what era you came in, or what, dude. The cockiness came with that. It was nothing that you could do about it. Every rebel I have ever met, and even now that we're older, guys that maybe I didn't meet back in the party scene that I meet now is like, hey, bro. And you could see that fucking rebel cockiness in them. It was just, it was just part of the gig, bro. And we, and we loved it. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, no, you're right. You're right. We're, we're all cocky, bro. We're all like, man, oh, yeah, my ribbed jeans are going to look the best tonight. And, oh, dude, I'm going <laughs> to blow it down with this shirt, dog, that I just found at fucking Savers. I'm going to blow it down or like the thrift store. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to look bomb because, you know, this rave or whatever, you know what I mean? That's this is part of the nature, man, of, of being a rebel or, or at that time. And still now, I mean, I still carry my cockiness. It pisses a lot of people off or it might rub people the wrong way. But that's just, you know, it grew in that section in that era, man, you know? And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, before I forget too, man, I think, I don't know if he's on here or not, but I got to give a, a big ups to, to Leo, uh, Freaky Ficky Man, yeah. man. Uh, Freaky Ficky Man, because without him, I wouldn't have, I, I would never, I think, been as popular as I was by him having me in Sinister and stuff like that, man. I give, I have the utmost respect for him, dude. I, I owe him a lot, bro. And, you know, I still keep in contact with him and stuff like that. You know, we, we did an event in 2011. I keep in contact with him, and I got to give him the utmost respect, man. If it wasn't for Leo, bro, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be anybody, bro. To be honest with you, dude. I mean, I, I owe him a lot, and you know, I, I thank him for that. No, it made you cool, dude. That's made you dope. Uh, let's talk about that event, man. You sent me the flyer, Kool Aid, and I posted it up. And sometimes I post these flyers not thinking because I did miss a lot of, you know, uh, of before and after Greece, and, and it's like, okay, so this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened. But then you send me a flyer, and I'm like, oh, I post it up. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then I notice, like, this is 2011. Like, whoa, that's crazy. Like, tell me a little bit about that event. What, what, how'd you guys get to that point? Well, 
we we started a, an internet radio show called Vegas Found Radio at the time, and I, I think I uh, I sent you the pics of that too, this little studio that we had and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I told Leo at that time, I'm like, you know, there's still a party scene here in Vegas. I mean, I know it's a little bit different from what we're used to, but I mean, there's still a party scene, and I mean. Being, you know, thinking about having a party and stuff like that, I'm like, you know, let's throw an event. And at that time, all the parties that were popping were like the reggaeton parties. You know, all they played was like reggaeton and perreo and stuff like that. And I told him, I mean, let's let's try to do an event. And he was all with it. And we hooked up with this uh, kid named Fabulous. He was from uh, Two Fly Entertainment. And at that time, that kid was like the most popular promoter at, of his time, you know, I mean, he, he threw the dopest parties, you know, he had like the big events and stuff like that, so we hooked up with him, and that's when we, we did that cool rave over at the Havana Grill, and, you know, we had a, we had a turnout, but like, you know, Leo said, bro, it was, we tried playing house music and EDM and stuff like that, but they just weren't having it, bro, they, they all wanted to hear reggaeton and stuff like that in Perreo, and, we, I automatically, I, I saw my, this party, because it was just way different, you know, it, it really was to compare to what we were used to, to what I was seeing there, it was like, yeah, it, it, it this ain't, this ain't our scene no more, and then they would claim to throw raves and stuff like that, and at the raves, they would play nothing but the thorn, I'm like, this ain't a rave, dude, at a rave, you play house music, but they didn't want to hear it, dude. You know what I mean? They didn't want to hear it. Yeah, dude. I mean, the scene changed, which is funny because not so long ago, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. I work for Red Bull. I'm driving, and I hear this guy like bumping some house music, and I'm like, "Oh, dude, this is crazy." I'm like, "All right, cool, cool, cool." They're listening to that that old school shit. All right, I'm done with that. So it's it's doing a first full full circle now. You know what I mean? That everything that we listen to is coming back. Yeah. No, man. Well, look at you know, I mean, look at house parties of the '90s, bro. You got all the all the big DJs that we grew up listening to. You know, La Rock, Irene, Tony B, Modern Romance, Mike Flores, all these DJs that we grew up listening to. I mean, they're playing back again, and I mean, they're getting back into it, bro. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of them. Never stop, but a lot of them are getting back into it because, I mean, that nostalgia is there, bro, and everybody wants to fucking, you know, re reminisce about, you know, the good times that they had when they were younger, you know? Yeah, man, I I, uh, I got to admit, dude, all this stuff that's going on right now, like the COVID really helped us up, come back up again. And I mean, just on Rebel Day 702, we got DJ Neto back spinning, DJ Tone back spinning. I went and uh, to the retirement home and, and pulled out DJ Panic, and we're gonna continue to you know do that. that one, <laughs> no, yeah, dude, I'm gonna give you I props on that one, bro, because yeah, I we dig them out. Panic the retirement home, dude. I'm like, look, bro, you need to come back. You tell me what you need, I'll provide it. You just come back and here we here he fucking killed it last week, dude. Yeah, he he killed it, man. You could tell right away that uh. That he was back in action again, man. Real quick. Yeah. Also, you mean, also, uh, Tone Son, PD, man. That that kid, he he's got some real talent, man. Tone Tone did a good job of teaching him, man. He he he's got some good talent, man. I'm I'm eager to see what else he comes out with, bro. To be honest with you, he's my new favorite DJ. I mean, he came out and the way he was mixing old house. You know, old school music to new music and back and forth, back and forth, dude, was amazing. And major props with him. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep using him on on face on on this page, dude, because the kid, the kid's great, man. He's a natural. You know, he's good. Yeah, I mean, he's got his dad's talent. You know. Yeah. I mean, well, no, I think he's better than his dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Crazy times, man. Crazy times. Yeah, yeah, that was great times, man. I loved it, dude. I, 
I mean, I, we obviously still talk about it. We still have a great time about it, you know, and we sit here, we created this page for it um, as, as a fluke. And here we are still sitting talking about it. And it's awesome, man. Love it, man. Yeah, dude. I mean, it, it's nice to reminisce, bro. It, it really is, dude. You know, it really is. And um, it just, there'll never be another scene like that. It, I mean, I, me and Panic were, were, were speaking earlier, and I'll never, I, I honestly think we'll never be able to recreate what we, what we party like, the way we partied in high school. They'll, they'll never recreate that again, honestly, to be honest with you, man. I, I really think the, I mean, that'll never happen again. No way. No, 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 man. It, it, we, I, I, I use the sign of, like, uh, lightning in a bottle, bro. Like, once we did that, it was cemented in history. And that's why we did the page. We wanted to make sure that we have, like, a history book to go back and talk about the old days, man, about the times that we had. Because we can't re- – there's no way we could redo this again. I mean, you put me on a battle – dance floor bro i'm gonna be out in like two minutes dude i'm done two moves <laughs> and i'm done bro like you know and it, it, it just happens we get older and, and it just ends it dies you know what i mean uh before yeah, i know you're big, absolutely right man. big shout outs to uh house party in the 90s what's up player man what's up uh we had him uh last week uh and super cool cool uh uh interview if you guys haven't had a chance to see it go on uh IGTV, Rebel Day 702, and check it out. Oh, no, part of it, because we lost it. We went to his page, but yeah. oh, go up, check out his page. Big ups to him, man. Big ups to him. Yeah, to Biggs, man. Big ups. Uh, go check out his page, dude. It's hot. It's always on fire. Um, yeah, we want... We were we, we should have some Vegas DJs on there. That's the only that's the only change we should uh, you know <laughs> let Vegas know we want some Vegas DJs on I'm, there too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him some videos, bro, so you can check out the boys from from Vegas. You know, I mean he he definitely represents a lot of like you know uh, a party scenes. Uh, I got a chance to talk to him, super cool cat, and and now that we're 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 cementing ourselves and we got you know three four good DJs that we could send him his way to put it out there and, 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 and check it out. So I'll send him some videos uh, and, and that way he could use them however he wants. You know what I mean? And, and get that, that Vegas, no, uh, the, the it, eyes it, on it, Vegas, bro. you know? Hell yeah. Yeah, man, definitely. Hell yeah, So man. we got like a, we got five minutes, bro. What do you want to talk about, bro? Like, you know, ending this, this, this uh, um, show, I, I, I appreciate you coming down and uh, and taking your time to hang out with us bro i really appreciate that and, and bringing some some stuff you know for us um to reminisce on dude and have a good time what do you want to talk about in these last five minutes that we got left man well i know uh everybody's been uh seeing it on the on on my page and some of it on your page uh coming august the 7th uh me and dj panic uh panic attack mix show man you know, me and me and Panic, uh, we uh, we're gonna start this mix show. It's gonna be something different than what you guys have heard before. We're gonna play a little bit of everything: salsa, merengue, cumbia, rock and español, old school hip hop, K rock. I mean, we're 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 gonna we're gonna try to switch it up to what everybody's doing now and try to add our own little flavor into it. And I hope everybody tunes in. We're gonna be live on Rebel Day Seven Hundred Two. Thanks to you. Boom. Uh, yep. It starts this August the 7th uh, at 9 p.m., 9 to 11. I mean, we'll go maybe a third hour, hopefully. DJ Neto counterattack coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping DJ Neto would DJ on our show, so I don't know how that might be. But yeah, hey, don't we worry, want everybody to listen. We're going to put them on tw- uh, on Mondays at 12 o'clock, bro, at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put that vote at 12 o'clock on Mondays, bro, so. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, Panic Attack coming August the 7th, me and DJ Panic. I mean, you guys heard DJ Panic set last week. It was fire, so expect more of that. He's going to be, the first two weeks, he's going to, he's the one that's going to be DJing. And uh, do you want to say it or, or should I say it for Milk Crates? No, dude. It, uh, we'll wait on that. We'll wait on that. I'll, I'll do a surprise on the milk crates again. Uh, okay. We'll wait on that one. But uh, for sure, for sure, it's it's definitely um, 
definitely something that we wanted to do with Rebel Day 702. And we were talking about with you and, and Panic for a while about um, adding a little bit more programming to Rebel Day 702, where you know that every Saturday at 8 o'clock you got, you know, you got uh, milk crates. Milk and crates. every Wednesday at 9 o'clock you got sessions. And now every day, every night at Friday, on Friday day, um, Friday nights, you will have a panic attack. So people could like, you know, set up and, and set up and be like, all right, cool. I'm going to go check out, uh, you know, panic attack or milk crates or whatever. And I really appreciate you guys, you know, saying yes to me and, and, and coming in with us and, and doing some stuff together. And, and it's going to be great, man. I can't wait. I mean, it's like I told you, bro, we're all a team. Um, we, we should all be together anyway. I mean, there shouldn't be no competition between any of us. Uh, we want, you know, like I told Panic, we want to have Tone. We want to have Neto. You know, all these guys that, that used to DJ back in the scene, you know, we, we want them on there. You know, Fat Beats, Creator, um, Chell, of course. You know, we could ever get him to DJ. But, yeah, you know. We should all, we know, we should, we should all, we should all be together, man. There shouldn't be no competition between any of us. I mean, we're all grown ass men and shit like that. So we should all be together, and there should be no competition between us. So I mean, we want all these DJs to you know, come on and DJ with us, bro. I mean, and and have a good time, bro. And you know, show the people what, what Vegas can do, bro. Because Cali started it, but Vegas took it over, bro. And Vegas can do it too, you know. That's the way. Yeah, I feel. we did. No, I mean, I, I one of my biggest things about this page is getting eyes back to what we did. Get eyes to over here because there was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. There was no MySpace. Even at that time when I got out, MySpace was just starting. So we didn't get a chance to show everybody what we did. So everybody's like, a lot of people I hear, oh, shit, Vegas had a party scene. Dude, we had a dope-ass party scene. And I always say pocos pero locos because we were a small scene. But dude, we did some crazy shit here in Vegas, and no, I want to take. You're absolutely the, right. I want to take the opportunity with Rebel Day Seven Hundred Two to be able to show the world everything. So we got two minutes left. I'm gonna throw this at you, dude. I would definitely want you to come out on on milk crates soon. We're gonna set that up. I want you to dust off your records, get you back on milk <laughs> crates, and have you on there, bro. I would love that. Uh, one minute and forty seconds left, bro. Take it away, man. Well, I just want to send a shout out to all my friends out there. Of course, DJ Panic, DJ Tone, DJ Neto, Chell, you, of course, OC, all the people that I ever kicked it with that that knew me. And, you know, Stevie, of course, you know, I, I, I mean, Stevie of anybody, if, you know, if they know anything, Stevie knows that Stevie's a, uh, a good friend of mine. And, you know, he 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 was there for me when when in a clutch. Back then, and I got in. I mean, he was there when when I needed him. So I owe him a lot. Big ups to him and his brother Andy. And it skies the the limit bro it really is sky's the limit well man thank you very much for taking a part of your day to come and chill here with us bro i really appreciate it thank you uh let's get this going let's keep it rolling bro send me fat beats man i want to talk to him i want to talk to all these cats bro i would love to have him on this on this page and and let's unite the 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 vegas scene uh from whatever too, huh? oh wow oh, oh.